Good morning. Welcome to our five-minute Bible study in the book of Revelation. Today we're in Revelation chapter 8, and we're ready to begin looking at the sounding of the seven trumpets. Those seven angels who come forward from the temple, each given a trumpet, and they prepare to blow them. Now let's quickly review where we are. So far in the book of Revelation, we've seen John having this great vision that shows him what God is about to do. He sees into heaven. He sees the throne of God. God is seated on the throne. In the right hand of God is a scroll. It represents the plan of God for the ages. The scroll is sealed with seven seals, and they begin to search for one who is worthy to open the scroll to break the seals. And the Lamb of God, the Son, steps forward. The Lamb who died for us and lives again. He comes and begins to break open the seven seals. Each of the seals represents things that will happen in, up until the time the sun returns. Things such as war and uh, violence and famine and death. These things will continue as part of this broken world. But the gospel will continue to advance. There will be persecution. Martyrs under the, under the altar, those who suffer for the cause of Christ. But the gospel will continue to go forward until the Lamb returns. All right, we've seen that. When the seventh seal is opened, that prepares the way for the trumpets to begin to sound, the next series of seven. And these trumpets represent the judgment of God on, on sin and rebellion and wickedness. Now, we've already seen some parallels between the seven seals and the seven trumpets. Some of it's stylistics. For instance, we, the seals, you remember, there were the first four, which formed a group, the four horsemen, and then there were the next three. And between the sixth and the seventh seal, there was an interlude with some other material given. The trumpets are the same way. There will be the first four, which will represent judgment on the natural order. And then there will be the next three, which will represent judgment in the way of supernatural events. And between the sixth and the seventh trumpet, there will be an interlude with some other material. So both these two series of sevens, the seals and the trumpets, follow the same sort of pattern. Now, trumpets are interesting. In the Bible, trumpets are used to announce coming judgment. They can be used to announce a time of battle or going forward to battle or a time of retreat. They could be used to announce something significant that God was about to do. We've already seen trumpets uh, in the book of Revelation. You remember in the very first chapter, when John first began to have his vision, he hears the voice of one, sounds like a trumpet. That's the voice of Jesus, because when he turns to look, he sees Jesus. At the end of the book of Revelation, uh, when the, we, we see the second coming, when the Lord returns, it will come with the sound of trumpet. In Matthew chapter 24, uh, when Jesus talks about the second coming, he says the day will be announced by the loud trumpet call of God, and the Son will return. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul also talks about the second coming. And he says when Jesus comes, there will be a loud trumpet call of God. So over and over again in the scripture, you see these, the significance of trumpets. It's the voice of God speaking. Something significant is about to happen time of judgment, a time of the revealing of God's will, the voice of Jesus sounding forward. So in each of these trumpets, the voice of Christ sounds forward, signaling God's time of judgment upon the world. So in verse 6, we're in chapter 8, it says, The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves. The first angel sounds his trumpet. There's hail and fire mixed with blood. Is hurled upon the earth. A third of the earth is burned up. A third of the trees are burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. We're not sure exactly what all this signifies, but we know it is a judgment upon the natural order. Part of the result of sin, part of the result of our rebellion against God is, is not only devastates our life, but it also affects the whole created world order. You remember when men were created in the book of Genesis, God tells us that we were meant to be stewards 
overseers of the natural order. So when judgment falls upon our sin, it not only affects us, it also affects the natural order. And so in this first trumpet, we see vegetation being affected, trees being affected. We, we see the natural order of things affected. In so many ways, we live sort of in a broken world. We see things are not as they should be. Part of the result of our sin. Part of the consequences of a world in rebellion against God is that the natural order is affected. The second angel sounds his trumpet, and a huge mountain all ablaze is thrown into the sea. The sea turns into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea die. A third of the shipping is destroyed. Again, we see the, the oceans affected. Uh, again, the effects of sin, God's judgment, consequences for the natural order. Now this is very similar to something we've seen before, is it not? You remember in the book of Exodus, when uh, God was bringing the children out of, out of Egypt, one of the plagues, of course, was that the, the river of the Nile turned to blood. And, and we see this sort of repeated. Uh, the third angel sounds his trumpet. A great star blazes like a torch. It falls from the sky on a third of the rivers, on a third of the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and the third of the waters turned bitter. And many people died from the waters that had become bitter. In the second trumpet, the oceans, the seawaters affected. In the third trumpet, fresh water is affected. And then the fourth angel sounds his trumpet. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, and a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Again, this is almost a repetition of the plagues in Egypt when there was that time of darkness over the land, you recall. And in this fourth angel sounding his trumpet, uh, the light, natural light, is diminished. So in these first four trumpets that are sounded, we see the judgment of God on the natural order. The, the entire world order is affected by our sin. You know, our, our sin not only affects us, it affects everything. Now, we don't understand all the ramifications of these trumpets, but we do understand that, that our sin has affected the natural order of things. Uh, the vegetation, the trees, the crops, the seawaters, the fresh waters, and even the light. Well, sin is a horrible thing. And that is why we so desperately need the redeeming touch of God. For sin destroys everything, our lives, and even the natural order of things over which we have stewardship. So anyway, the first four trumpets have sounded. God's judgment is being unfolded. But notice the judgment is not complete. It's only a third that is affected. In other words, God tempers his judgment that we might repent. For even with God's judgment, there's a call upon us to repent and return to him. So the judgment's not total yet. It's not complete. It's tempered. Only a third of things are affected. A third of the vegetation, a third of the seas, a third of the fresh water, a third of the light. This gives us a chance to repent. God is calling his world to return to him. And oh, how we need to turn back to him. Okay, this is where we're going to stop today. Uh, next time we'll start. We'll look at the other three trumpets, but we've seen the first four. God's judgment call upon the natural order, effects of our sin, but also his judgment is a call to repentance. It's a, a measure of grace, giving us a chance to turn back unto him. And oh, how we all need to keep turning back to God. Hope you have a great day today. I hope you have a blessed day. And I will see you next time for our five-minute stake.